Hello, hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Juke. I am a musical theater performer from the Netherlands and I am making a series about all my theater experiences so far. If you haven't seen my first two videos, make sure to check them out. I'll link them down below for you. And today I'm gonna talk all about my very, very first contract, my first professional job as a singer in Doha, Qatar. Let's get into it. I graduated in July 2016. I was super ready for the audition season to start. I think in August I saw this casting call of like a production in Doha, Qatar. We were looking for singers, dancers. It was an original new production in the Mall of Qatar done by a German production company. And I was like, okay, would this be something I want to audition for? Let's just go to audition and see whatever happens. It's a good experience anyways, right? So I think it was mid-September that I auditioned in Amsterdam. And I had to start with a dance call. And I was there with a lot of people who just came for the dance call, a lot of dancers. And obviously I am not as much as a dancer, so it was really a struggle to get through that dance audition. I remember that at the end we had to do like splits, both legs and middle split and all of that. <laughs> really embarrassing for me. Thought I was like, okay, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm gonna sing afterwards and everything is gonna be fine. And if I don't book the job, I, I don't care. I don't really know what it is anyway, so it's just a good experience. I remember it was a really like chill setting, the people behind the table, the audition panel is really nice and they were like, okay, what are you gonna sing? So I sang uh, Gravity by Sarah Bareilles and it went really well and it was one of those moments where you can just feel something happening in the room. I felt straight away that the people were like on their on their toes and like really interested and I saw them like showing off their goosebumps to each other and I don't know if you can just feel that happening when you're at an audition and I was like okay this is going well I think so I did that and then I did one or two of the songs that I prepared from like the show then they asked me so how is your availability and I was like well I wasn't really doing anything at, anything at that point I was just working at a restaurant so I was like I am available <laughs> and they said are you afraid of heights and I was like no I'm not afraid of heights and I was like, what is happening? They basically said, we're still looking for a female lead singer for this project and we would love to have you for it. They filmed everything and they said, we still have to send all of it to someone else to watch. But once they've confirmed, the job is yours, basically. So you can imagine how overwhelming that was. I didn't expect that to happen at all. And then they were like, we might start in two weeks. So I was like fresh out of school, just like one of my first auditions I did. And I basically booked this job, but it was all a lot to handle. I remember that I felt super overwhelmed, really happy, but also like, whoa, what is happening? <laughs> Am I really maybe gonna fly out to Qatar in two weeks, whoa. They said, keep yourself healthy, we'll be in touch. And I just left that building thinking, oh my God, what just happened? The funny thing was that it was such perfect timing for me. I was so ready to like leave it all behind and you know, fly out for a little bit and go on a new adventure. So I straight away was like, yes, if they offer me the job for sure, I am gonna do it. I waited another two, three days, I think. And then the agent that came with the project emailed me, okay, the job is yours, congratulations. So I quit my job as a wait waitress straight away. And I was like, I'm ready for this adventure. S super scared, of course, but I, yeah, I was totally in it. Then they said, um, everything is new. Everything is getting built right now. And there is some sort of delay with the building of the venue. And they said, we're not sure when we're going to fly you guys out yet. So just, you know, we'll keep in touch and we'll let you know once we know more. So that went on for a little while and I was like, okay, I'm just waiting on this job to start. When is it going to happen? But it was at the same time kind of good because it would have been a lot 
in 14 days to just like leave my life behind and fly out to a new country for like six months and i think in october they said okay it's not gonna be for another four weeks it's probably gonna be like the end of november so i knew i had a little bit of time i got my driver's license at that point which is a bonus as well because i had nothing else to do i was just waiting on this job to start and then i think i got my flight information and by the 20th of november i was ready to fly out to doha qatar Ooh, i remember that night before i was super nervous i couldn't sleep i was really excited but also anxious about everything that was happening and you know leaving a life i knew behind leaving my parents leaving my family my friends everything to start like a completely new night life in a country that was nothing like europe and that i didn't know a lot about everything inside me just said yes do it go for it this is this needed to happen and it was such a good opportunity straight out of school becoming like a leading lady in a original production i got on a plane the 20th of november 2016 and i felt super excited i felt nervous i had all sorts of emotions but i was ready to start this new adventure so i arrived in doha and the airport was already like so impressive it was super modern and uh, super big and there were all these people walking around in in burkas and just you're entering a completely different world and i was like wow it's really happening with two suitcases i was starting a new life basically i was supposed to go straight to the uh compound we were gonna live in but then while i was on the plane they emailed us saying it's not ready yet we're gonna bring you guys to a hotel first and then you're gonna stay there for like one or two nights and then we're all gonna go together to the compound i was on this bus late at night it was like midnight or 1 a.m 2 a.m something like that and just like driving in this strange country like the end of november and it was still kind of hot out different everything was different basically so i remember arriving at the hotel and meeting a few of the girls there already everyone was super nice i went to bed that night and they were like just order room service if you're hungry and i was straight away like "Ooh, this is such a luxurious life like i wasn't used to any of that like getting this big hotel room and being able to order room service and all of that i was just it was just all so exciting but the next day i went to breakfast and i met a few of the other people from the cast and at that day i think we went to dinner with everyone and got drinks and i straight away really hit it off with a couple of girls and it's always nice to you know get into a contract and straight away have good connection with people because you're there all by yourself in a strange country um so it's really nice to have a feeling of okay yeah everything is fine um, the, i like these people i'm i have people i connect with so it's gonna be okay we stayed at the hotel for two nights and after that they were like okay it's happening pack your suitcases we're gonna go to our compound it looked fantastic all new uh 10 villas brand new buildings everything was just like a big dream the villas were huge like we had this big living room we were living with I think five or six person in a house uh, everyone had their own room and their own bathroom attached and then we had this big kitchen with everything in it the thing was that we couldn't start rehearsal straight away because the venue we were gonna have our shows in and where our theater was the mall of qatar wasn't ready yet ready yet so as you can see there's kind of a pattern in this already like at first our compound wasn't ready then the mall wasn't ready and that is straight away one of the things that is like a major difference with europe and working in an arab country because deadlines are simply just they don't mean as much to the arabs as they do to europeans <laughs> like you can say at this and this day we're going to be done but their mentality is just inshallah which means so much as uh, if if Allah wants it, it will happen. It was really, really hard to get something done because they just simply do whatever they wish. <laughs> so they said, okay, at the beginning, we're just gonna start rehearsals off at the villas. 
we don't really have another choice. The cast wasn't fully complete yet because there were still some people to arrive. Um, we were still with only two singers. So we were basically rehearsing with the two of us. <laughs> and I mean, how many sessions can you put in? I had one private session and then one session with the other singer and that was basically it. So I had a lot of free time. So I just like laid at the pool, we had a gym. So I just like went to the gym. That is actually where I really got into fitness as well in that contract. It was just such a weird life. We were far away from anything else. So we just had like a big IKEA around the corner. So the only thing we could do is just get our rooms a little bit cozy and go shop at IKEA. We rehearsed for a little bit um, and that was it. And we just like got to know each other and had like dinners on the street and yeah, just kind of getting used to living in a different country. So we just, for a couple of days or maybe a week or something, we rehearsed just at the villas. And then after that, uh, they were like, okay, we're gonna we have to do something because the venue isn't ready yet and we need a bigger space to rehearse. Like the dancers couldn't just do all their choreos in the living room, of course. So they booked a place at a spa facility where they had like, some sort of yoga rooms with mirrors and all of that where we could rehearse. So that was the first time we actually got on a little bit more of a schedule. There were buses going out into the city center. We had to drive for, I think like 30, 40 minutes uh, in this big modern city center with like skyscrapers and the most fancy buildings you've ever seen with weird shapes and architecture and all of that. And the weird thing was that you would expect uh, some kind of liveliness. Like it gets like this big city kind of vibe, but like I think 60% of the buildings was just empty, just sitting there, just built because it looks nice and they have money there and there was nothing going on there. And you have to imagine the life in Qatar is really different. People don't... Uh, live outside the way we do like they live in malls they don't have like any shops or restaurants or anything on the street or just normal like in a city center like the way we do they have like the souk which is their uh, traditional market and then they have malls and that's it like you don't really have an outside life going on so we were rehearsing at this spa and it was just like a big fancy ghost town. Super weird. The rehearsals were going well. I was feeling really good with the material. Everything was just original. So uh, they would just say like, how does it feel for you? Is that the right key? It's just really nice to do an original production because it's all made for the first people who do it, of course. And then finally the venue was almost ready and we went in there for the first time. And it was just great. Like walking into this mall and then all of a sudden you're like in the middle of this mall and there's this big modern stage with like big screens and um, a big lift that went 10 meters into the ground where we could get in and rise up from the stage and there were like these water fountains and all of it and it was so exciting seeing it all for the first time and being like wow this is where we're gonna perform our shows and yeah we just basically couldn't wait for it to start. We had this whole space downstairs, a big rehearsal studio, there were dressing rooms, another floor down, there was like this big, big wardrobe area, all super exciting with like lots and lots and lots of handmade costumes. Everything just looked amazing. And I was so ready to start rehearsing on the stage. I was going to fly and, and go on this lift and we had all these big things that were going up and down and it was just all so exciting. So that is where we started doing night rehearsals and we were on a night schedule, which meant we were basically rehearsing from like eight o'clock at night where we started downstairs at our rehearsal space. And then by like 10 o'clock, the mall closed and we were able to go up to the stage and um, yeah, use all the features, like try, try the flying, um, use the big lift and all of it. And we basically rehearsed until three, four, sometimes five in the morning, I think. And it was just an insane 
time because you know being on night schedule is super weird for your body and I remember that I always woke up feeling hangover it was just really weird getting your biological clock to get used to this shift we had a lot of struggles with the flying system with getting stuff done I think the creative team and the production team and everyone just like pulled their hair out at that point because it was just so hard to just get things done for them we were rehearsing a couple of different things we were gonna have like four or five big shows up and then we had like these smaller solo shows for the singers and we had our mall whites who did stuff like around the mall so they were in our shows as well but they were mainly entertainment for like around the mall like i said our compound was in the middle of nowhere so um there was really nothing to do other than rehearse go to the gym lay at the pool and go out for drinks in the fancy hotels and you have to imagine alcohol is super super expensive there so you paid like 12 or 14 dollars easily for a glass of wine or a beer insane when i think about it now how much money i spent there on food and alcohol but yeah because we were in such a weird night schedule and um there was really no other life than just rehearsing there we had to get out of there and you know go to the restaurants and go to the clubs and i had some of like the craziest nights out there i was just living the life getting dressed up all fancy and you know i wasn't used to going out on like hills and it's just like such a different life than i was used to you have to imagine we started there at the end of november and you know christmas came it was uh, new year's came it was january and the mall wasn't still officially open <laughs> there were uh, people shopping there already and all of that but the official opening still had to happen so that happened by i think the 7th of february i wrote this down just in case i would forget uh yeah the 7th of february uh we opened the mall with this big show and it was the first time we were actually on stage really exciting for the first time getting in all this makeup and these big costumes and you know we had been there since the end of november rehearsing our stuff and we were super ready but it was just a lot of work to get everything working the technical aspects and all of it so it was it was a really exciting moment that opening and doing something on that stage for the first time the first show we were gonna open was pulse which was this big show uh, about a little boy drummy who was played by a girl <laughs> uh it was like a little drummer boy and he came into like this world of strange kind of robotic people and um having a whole journey there there was a lot of flying involved uh, there was a lot of technical aspects involved um i was in the air for most of the show <laughs> uh, which was a really exciting experience by the way doing that for the very first time we rehearsed the vignettes which were like the little solo shows of the singers and i rehearsed my first one which was called enchanted it was like this disney kind of feel show yeah the second of march that is when i finally opened my first solo show <laughs> went really well I was really happy with it and two days after our big premiere of Pulse was there uh, it had been a, quite a struggle some things had happened right before that which weren't super nice like our acrobats who were doing aerial stuff they are a beautiful amazing couple who um, did all this crazy stuff in the air and we had our last run through basically and the people from like high up 
from the mall of Qatar came to watch and came to see if everything was fine and if we didn't like break any rules and they basically said that couple can be in that show because there's a lot of touching involved and apparently touching in the air wasn't allowed uh don't ask me why up till this day i still don't really understand uh because we were doing partnering stuff and touching on stage as well but in the air was a different story so basically they had to be cut out of the show you can imagine how hard that was we were there rehearsing from like the end of november and it was march by then and we were about to premiere the show and they were like these people can't go on so it was a really tough process but we got the show up and running and we had our big opening night and it was great it was packed with people i'll um have some pictures and i'll show you a little bit what it looked like it was just a great experience yeah we were we were on from that moment this is where I realized this video was gonna be super super long again so I decided to make a part one and a part two so make sure to look out for part two where I tell you everything about putting the other shows up the rest of my year in Doha and the reason why I left Doha so thank you so much for watching I'll see you in the next video make sure to subscribe like and hit the little notification button so you won't miss the next video thank you bye